Usually the roar of heavy machinery is bad news for the environment, but these machines are here to help. For many years, Friar Branch drained an agricultural portion of Hamilton County near Chattanooga. Then in the 1980s, the development started. Buildings, malls, roadways, and parking lots, and the stream was forever changed. It was basically made to fit within the urban setting so that development could occur around it. The contributing watershed as it developed just pumped more and more water into the system. The high volume of water runoff create erosion around the stream banks and the erosion go, uh, is, create the sedimentation. Part of the stream was straightened and lined with concrete. The protective riparian buffer, the plants and trees growing along the stream bank, disappeared, replaced by houses and a golf course. All the development that occurred upstream, the straightening and concreting the channel, changed it from a non-flooding environment to one that flooded with almost every rain event. So when it rained real hard, it would come right up to the back steps of these houses right here. And of course in the, in the roads too, it was a bad problem. When we encroach on streams and we take away that floodplain and it doesn't have the, the ability to function anymore, it dramatically changes the nature of the stream. Changes that impact people and wildlife. Tennessee probably has more species of crayfish than any other state. TWRA biologist Carl Williams is looking for the endangered Chickamauga crayfish. It's got these distinguishing black stripes on the abdomen here. It only occurs in this watershed. It's a pretty rare species in the state. Carl knows that changes to the stream make it harder for the crayfish to survive. Well, we remove trees and vegetation along the stream edge. It allows a little bit too much sunlight to penetrate and we're warming the streams up and this species is a cool headwater stream inhabitant. Now, thanks to a cooperative effort, Friar Branch is being restored to a more natural state. A big challenge to urban stream restoration is that there are often many property owners. We had some public meetings. We dealt with a lot of landowners. We have 50 landowners here. Discussing and understanding what not only the stream needs, but also what the wants and needs and preferences are of that landowner are, are incredibly important. Another critical step is determining what can be done. Biologists survey the existing stream to see what lives there, and engineers come up with a plan for moving the stream bed and adding curves or meanders to it. Water doesn't like to flow in a straight line. That's why when we re-establish a concreted line channel stream, we have to put into it enough sinuosity, enough curves, meanders you might call them, to allow the stream to do what it does naturally. The meandering helps reduce that energy, keeps everything in a stable condition. Equally important is re-establishing the riparian zone. All of that vegetation helps to hold the soil together. It provides shading and temperature control in the water. It helps control the impacts of flooding. It helps to prevent material that comes in from the watershed, whether that's trash or whether that's um, runoff off of roads, which is gonna contain pollutants, sometimes petroleums, rubber that wears off of our tires every single day. That's gonna get caught up in the floodplain and not end up in the stream where it can be toxic to the aquatic life. Today, Friar Branch has been transformed from what was essentially a concrete line ditch into a free-flowing stream. And while its metamorphosis isn't complete, residents are already reaping the benefits. They've sloped these banks off and stabilized them. There's some vegetation growing within the water, and we've already picked up a couple of juvenile Cambarus extraneous or the Chickamauga crayfish. So that's a good sign that they're reproducing. The wildlife recognizes the change and start utilizing it. And that adds to the experience of the people who live around and walk through that environment because they see life that had not been there before. Now what we have now is so much better than what we had before. And I've seen deer and we've also had turkeys in here too. It already has enhanced the value of their property and in this neighborhood too. It's a nice place to live. Stream restorations are not always the best tool for flood control, but here at Friar Branch, it has reduced flooding for landowners since the project actually altered the floodplain. While the restoration can be considered a success, it's not a cure-all. Now there's more parking lots and more rooftops and more shops 
and that changes the way the water gets to the stream. The stream will never be back what it was unless all of that was eliminated, and that's unrealistic. So we can go in and restore the stream to a condition that's more stable, higher in value and function for habitat and water quality, but it will never be what it once was. Still, it is a step forward, an opportunity to learn how people and nature can coexist. People see that it is not necessarily uh, detrimental to their economic development or their lifestyle or their property. It actually is beneficial. Then it shows that we can still live around the streams and in the watershed with little impact. We all have a connection to where we live and restoring these streams in urban situations to a point where they can work both for the human inhabitants and the animal species, I think feeds us, gives us a sense of accomplishment and enjoyment in life. And that's our goal. I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side. <music>